Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my January wrap up. So all the books that I read last month, I read a little bit over 30 books and I want to say 10 of them are straight up just Immortals After Dark books. So I went on a little binge but let me just jump into this wrap up. The first book that I read back in January was Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. I gave this one four stars. It was such a good mafia romance. I was in the mafia romance mood and someone from Instagram told me about it, recommended it to me, so I gave it a try. I mean, I've loved A. Zavarelli in the past, so I had high hopes for this one and it turned out so well. It's dark and intense and angsty, which I always love. And the hero, he's known as this debt collector. He's the guy that the mafia hires to torture people to get answers from. Alessio is also a single father who is in need of a nanny and he hires the heroine who is mute. Natalia actually connects with Alessio's son really well, really quickly. That relationship was really sweet to read but she does hide some very dark secrets and I really liked all the twists and turns in this book. There's a ton of good chemistry in the romance. Alessio is like this cold and stoic alpha hero and Natalia is the only woman, the only person who can stand up to him. She's the only one who is able to make him feel and she's also kind of like the bridge between Alessio and his son who don't exactly have the best relationship. He's a really young child so he's like not sure what to do with him. But this is great, a really solid mafia romance, and there's this couple in this book that I'm hoping will get their own book soon. I read Wed to the Wild God by Ruby Dixon. This is book three, the third standalone in her Aspect and Anchor series, her fantasy romance series. I love this series so much. It is such a good slow burn fantasy romance series. It's very different from her other books, but sadly I did not love this third book. It was a huge disappointment. I give it three stars. It is definitely the weakest one in the series for me because we kind of lost that slow burn that I loved in the first two books and it's also not quite as long and fleshed out. The first two books are pretty long, like over 500 pages, but I love that, especially for slow burn romances and for world building. But here it was a lot shorter, I believe, and I just never really fell in love with Carly or Kasim, our main characters. Kasim is another god hero. He is the hedonism aspect, which means it's a very, very insta-lusty. They pretty much go straight to bed as soon as they meet each other, and it's kind of not that fun to read. So Kasim is is a hedonism aspect of a god and he's from a different dimension, a different world, but he somehow ends up on earth and that's when Carly comes across him. She's forced to be his anchor, which means people are trying to kill her to kill him. They enter this marriage of convenience, they try to get Kasim back to his world and Carly is forced to go along with him. But sadly the story itself, it just felt like the stakes weren't as high as the previous two books. I mean Carly and Kasim, all they did was just sleep together. And a lot of the book does take place on Earth, which was not what I was expecting because it's just not quite as fun as the other fantasy world. So this one was pretty disappointing, but I will say if you love himbo type characters, himbo type heroes, you will probably enjoy Kasim. Next I read Return All by Eve Dangerfield. I love this one. I give it four and a half stars. It is another very, very steamy book from her. She loves writing Daddy Kink and this is another one. It is a second chance romance between between high school sweethearts, between Derek and Mara. They were everything to each other, but then after they graduated, he left to go play soccer professionally. He left to make it big, and he sadly never looked back until he finally does and realizes that Mara actually disappeared forever. But it turns out Mara, of all things, she won the freaking lottery and just changed her entire life. She built a new life for herself outside of their small town and outside of Derek. Now they reunite as adults and she wants nothing to do with him because he broke her heart but she does want some good sex from him so she allows for a fling. Derek our hero is kind of an idiot. You will either love him or hate him. He does make some really bad decisions especially back then when they were teenagers but he was a lovable one for me and I love that pretty much this whole book is him groveling to Mora and trying to redeem himself and make up for the hurt that he caused. I loved how unique Mara's character was. She's this wealthy introvert. I mean she won the lottery and then she got plastic surgery. She got breast implants. Like I loved how plastic surgery here was just so normalized with her. But you will definitely enjoy this book if you love a hero who pretty much begs the heroine to take him back, which I mean, of course I do. It's angsty. It's hot. It's funny. It was just a really, really good read. And then I started on, well, I continued with the 
Immortals After Dark series binge that I was doing. I read 12 of them last month, nine of them were rereads, and then I finally read some newer ones in this series. So I read Dark Desires After Dusk by Cressley Cole. This is book five in the series. It's Kate and Holly's romance. Kate is a demon and Holly is a human, or at least she thinks she's a human. Kate is the demon who lost his brother's crown, and in order to get that crown back, in order to make his brother king of their demonarchy again, he has to betray Holly. He has to sacrifice her, even though she's his fated mate. Holly, our human, who's actually half a Valkyrie, she was a great heroine. She's kind of just thrown into this whole new world. Obviously, she had no idea that demons and monsters and a whole bunch of other things existed, but she is very, very strong throughout it all. I also thought that it was really interesting reading about a heroine who has OCD here. But the romance is great. There's lots of good chemistry. Kate is obviously keeping this whole secret, so it does add a little bit of angst to it. But I loved how things worked out. I loved how Holly grew into her powers. There's lots of action, a good amount of steam, so it's a very solid installment in the series, and I give it four stars. I reread the next book, book six, Kiss of a Demon King, which is Kate's brother's romance, Riot Strum. Originally, I gave this one three stars. It's definitely one of my least favorite of the series, and because of my reread, I might bump it up to 3.5. It's still not, like, amazing or anything, but I did listen to the audiobook, and the narrator, Robert Peckoff, is just so, so good that I could not enjoy the audio. But the story itself here was just okay. I just never really fell in love with Rydstrom. He's a demon king and his fated mate is a sorcerer who is kind of like a witch but kind of not. Sabine is the queen of illusions and she uses an illusion to capture Rydstrom and make him pretty much her slave for a little bit. It's very much enemies to lovers and even besides the whole kidnapping thing, Sabine is Rydstrom's greatest enemy's sister. Her brother was the one who stole his throne. So she kidnapped him in the previous book and then he ends up escaping and kidnapping her back in their own book. So there's a lot of back and forth here, a lot of tension, a lot of fighting, but I just never really fell in love with the romance here. Rydstrom was this okay. I like Sabine a little bit more just because she's so, so funny. But sadly, this one's just not a favorite for me. Book seven is Untouchable and this one is my least favorite of the series. I gave it three stars when I first read it and I also gave it three stars for my reread. And the reason why I don't love this book is because of Murdoch, our hero. He is the fourth and final Roth brother to finally get his book. He's one of the Roth vampires. His bride, his fated mate, is one of the Valkyries. Daniela is also part Ice Fae, which means that no one can touch her except for another Ice Fae. Otherwise, they will cause her unbearable pain. So it does put a damper on the romance here. Murdoch just can't touch Daniela, even though he wants her. And he does get pretty whiny about it. I like Danny's character, but I just didn't feel like Murdoch was all that understanding about her condition. I don't really remember there being too much about the story either. Like the plot wasn't all that interesting and the romance itself dragged, so easily my least favorite. I reread book eight, which is Pleasure of a Dark Prince, which I gave four stars to. We're back with the Lycays, we're back with the werewolf shifters, and Gareth, our hero, is the Lycay prince. His brother is the king. Gareth has been chasing his fated maid pretty much since book one, since he first met her. She is one of the Valkyrie, Lucia, but she refuses him. She refuses him for seven books because she's promised to be a maiden, a virgin, for a goddess. She has to remain chaste in exchange for being an archer with perfect aim. There's a lot of good push and pull here. Gareth is just so single-mindedly determined to win Lucia's heart. There's also a lot of good action here too because they're traveling all over the world while well, Lucia is traveling all over the world and Gareth is just following her and they're trying to stop this evil being in Lucia's life. So this one was super fun and I love the chemistry. We're at book nine here with Demon from the Dark and this one is actually one of my favorites. I originally gave it four stars, but I have to bump it up to five because I loved it so freaking much. If you love heroes who are alpha and feral and animalistic, you will love Malcolm. He's the first half demon, half vampire in the series, and demons are one of the most powerful creatures in this world. He was actually forced to turn into one. He was originally a demon and he was forced to turn half a vampire. So he's kind of gone insane and hasn't been a part of society for like hundreds of years. His fated mate is a 
witch named Caro who gets kidnapped by this human organization who wants to destroy all these paranormal creatures. And in order to save herself and her adopted daughter, Caro has to lure Malcolm back to the organization so they can take him in and study him. I freaking loved Malcolm and Caro so, so much. I also loved Caro's adopted daughter, Ruby, who is so sweet and funny. The steam was amazing. I mean, Malcolm is a virgin hero who is just so obsessed with Caro. It gets super angsty and emotional. I mean, Malcolm would literally die for Caro and it was just amazing. Book 10, Dreams of a Dark Warrior is another one of my top favorites. We are still with this human organization and the hero Declan is one of the leaders in this group. So he's kind of a bad guy because he's the one in charge of kidnapping these paranormal creatures and studying them in very unethical ways. This one is a five star read for me. It is definitely the angstiest book of the series. Declan is trying to eradicate these paranormal creatures and Regan, a Valkyrie, is one of those paranormal creatures. He's not the one who directly does awful things to Regan, but he is a leader. So she goes through all this pain, all this torture because of Declan. It gets so heartbreaking and emotional here and you almost wonder how Declan can redeem himself, but he does. There's a bit of reincarnation here, which I loved because Declan is actually a former warlord that Regan fell in love with hundreds of years ago. So this one is super emotional and intense and I loved it. And now for my favorite of the series, this is Lothair book 11. It's a five star read for me. It was my top favorite when I first read the series and it still is today after catching up with the whole series. We've got an anti-hero who's kind of been a villain throughout the first 10 books. Lothair is a vampire who is one of the most powerful beings and also one of the oldest. And ironically, this all powerful guy, his bride, his fated mate, is a lowly human. But he doesn't actually believe that Ellie is his fated mate because she's kind of been taken over by this goddess. So he thinks the goddess is his fated mate and treats Ellie terribly. He does more than make up for it later on, but I loved Ellie. She's an amazing heroine. She is so, so funny. She's from like the backwoods of Appalachia. She is the perfect match for this not so great guy. I love the romance so much. It gets really hot really steamy and I've just reread this book so many times. Next in the series is Shadow's Claim which is the first new book that I read in Immortals After Dark because I only ever read up to Lothair. So this was my first non reread and I don't know why I was so surprised by how much I loved it but it was amazing. I give it five stars. It's another favorite for me in the series even though it does seem like the opposite for a lot of the other people. It's book 12 in the series but it's also technically the first book in the spin-off in the Dacian series. It's the first book about these mysterious royal Dacia vampires. Our hero Trahan is a prince. His fated mate, his bride, is a half sorceress, half demon princess of a demon kingdom. Bettina's godparents have set up this tournament for contestants to compete and battle and kill each other for Bettina's hand in marriage. So the winner will get to marry her and also be the new king. So Trahan sees this as a chance to not only protect Bettina from whoever possibly could have won that tournament and also be her husband. Bettina is an interesting heroine. She's one of the more weaker heroines in the series because she has PTSD from her time being attacked by Reckoners. She's a little timid, a little scared, and she's also lost her powers. She's also a little bit in love with her best friend Caspian who is very much not in love with her. Trahan definitely has his work cut out for him trying to make Bettina fall in love with him, but he does it in the sweetest way. He literally gives up everything for Bettina. He was just one of the most romantic, one of the sweetest heroes in the series for me. I will say Bettina does kind of make Trian go through a bit too much for her love, but I still loved it. The romance is great. I love the action and there's some really, really funny secondary characters here. I then read McCree, which is book 13 in the series and we're back with the light case. Will is one of the McCree twins. He is a werewolf shifter and he broke my heart. This is the only book so far that has made me cry in the prologue because it was so, so heartbreaking. Will was raped by a succubus when he was a young boy. He also lost his parents because of his rapist and he has lived for almost a thousand years with this loss and pain. So his prologue literally had me tearing up. It was so, so heart-wrenching. His twin brother Monroe has pretty much been the only thing that's been keeping him alive until he finally meets his fated mate Chloe. Chloe is supposed 
supposedly human and she's also the daughter of the man who had Will kidnapped. Her father was another leader in that human organization who kidnapped and tortured Will. Once Chloe and Will meet, they start to fall for each other, things go pretty well, and it goes a bit too easily until they find out what Chloe actually is because she's not entirely human and now McGreep hates her but he can't let her go. She still has faded mate even though she is the one thing that Will hates the most and it gets so angsty here. I will say I wish we got a little bit more groveling from Will here because he really does hurt Chloe but I still enjoy the romance and I gave this one four stars. I kind of skipped around next because I got an arc of Cressy Cole's newest book, book 18 in the series. So I had to read Monroe next because this is Will's twin brother's book. It's been about five years since the last Immortals After Dark book released so it's been a while but this is a romance between a like a, a werewolf shifter and a monster huntress. Monroe is literally what Kearney has trained to kill almost her entire life. Unfortunately she ends up dying before Monroe can ever be with her and that's where some time traveling comes in. Monroe goes back in time back to her time before she ends up dying and saves her and takes her all the way back to the present. So it's a very rough start for the both of them. He is what she's supposed to kill. She has left everything behind because of him but I really like the way that the romance played out. I like the way that they were overcoming all these huge obstacles. I ended up giving this one four stars. I did really enjoy it. It's not like a top favorite but I did really like it. I also loved all the cameos of LaFair and Ellie. The ending of the book did seem a little rushed like there was so much going on in the last like 15-20% but I still liked it overall and there's this surprise reveal at the very end that had me screaming. I have no idea who the possible couple could be next but hopefully we don't have to wait another five years for it. Dark Sky was next for me. This is book 14 in Immortals After Dark. I've actually been dying to read this one ever since I read La Player years ago because the couple here they kind of were left on a cliffhanger in La Player. Lanthe the heroine here gets taken away by Thronos and and they kind of disappeared. So this is enemies to lovers between former childhood best friends. Lanthe is a sorceress and Thronos is a reckoner so he has wings. He's a winged hero. They were childhood best friends even though their species are enemies. They hate each other so they get torn apart, they hurt each other, and now they hate each other. Thronos who is the prince of his people, he wants revenge against Lanthe for causing him so much pain in the past and they go on this like, crazy adventure together as he takes her back to his home against her will. I give some four stars. I really like this one. There's a lot of good tension between these two. So much hurt and history between them. I really love the way that they slowly fell in love and it's always nice to read about a virgin hero. And then the final Immortals After Dark book that I read last month was Sweet Ruin. This is book 15 in the series and I was actually kind of wary going into this one because I've heard some mixed reviews mostly about the hero. It was pretty interesting reading about such a man horror hero usually with Cresley Cole and with this series it's of course Faded Mates so once the hero sees his mage she is all that he can think about but Rune uses sex as part of his job. Rune is part of the Morior. He is part of this group that is out to destroy Earth but there's a lot more nuance to this group than we thought and I'm actually really looking forward to everyone in the Morior to get their romance. So the romance here Rune is half fae and half demon and and Josephine is half phantom, half vampire, which means that she is the only person, one of the few beings, who is able to drink Rune's blood and not die from it. There's so much good banter and chemistry between these two. Jo is kind of a newbie to this paranormal world. Even though she is a paranormal creature herself, she had no idea that there's a whole world of them out there. I loved her character so much. She is hilarious and strong. She went through so much. I loved her journey throughout this book. Rune wasn't always perfect but I did end up falling for him. I give this one four stars. You could definitely tell this is a turning point for the series and I really enjoyed it. Moving on to the non-Immortals After Dark books. The next book that I read was Wedding Date by Monica Murphy. This was a cute installment in her dating series. They all can be read as standalones. This is a 
friends to lovers romance with some fake dating. Kelsey and Theo are friends who bonded over their failed relationships and then Theo gets invited to his ex-wife's wedding to his cousin. Even though he doesn't want to go because obviously it's going to be super awkward, he asks Kelsey to be his fake date for this wedding. It is fairly predictable here. You can obviously tell that this is when things start to get real for them, but I did have fun with it. It's very light and fluffy. It was a three-star read for me. It's nothing amazing, but still a pretty fun friends to lovers fake dating romance. Next, I read Good Deeds by Catherine Moon. I give some four stars. It is a sci-fi romance with robot heroes, android heroes. This was a recommendation from my friend Samantha from Books with Samantha. As soon as she told me it was a reverse harem romance with robot heroes. I was very intrigued. So it's sci-fi and technology has evolved enough that robots can pretty much pass for humans, but most of them are created as sex robots. Nochka, the heroine, is a pilot who travels between planets as part of her job and she has hit her heat. This means she needs sex immediately and she goes to a brothel where these robots work. She doesn't have that much money though, so she goes to one of the more run-down brothels and that's where our heroes are. All of our android heroes are in need of some sort of repair, so they make this deal with Noshka. She'll repair them in exchange for sex. She does end up falling for them, and they grow real genuine feelings for her, even though they're still robots. And it was just super adorable to read. Like, all the heroes are so sweet. They all have their very distinct personality, but they just adore Noshka. We have five robot heroes here, and they were just the best to read. There's also some suspense, especially towards the end of the book. And like always, I just love this unique world that Catherine Moon has created. My next read was Homecoming King by Penny Reed. This is a four-star read for me. I adored it. It's perfect if you're in the mood for something sweet and feel good and fun. And this might be a little early, but if you do want to wait and save it for your Christmas TBR, you could totally do that. It is Christmas related, but we do still have quite a while away before it's Christmas again. So we've got a grumpy football player hero, a bartender heroine who used to have a crush on him back during school, and there's also a marriage of convenience. I honestly could not stop smiling when I was reading this one because it's just so freaking sweet. Abby works at a bar and then of all people to walk into her bar, it's Rex, a famous football player and the boy that she used to be in love with. Rex is pretty down on his luck when it comes to romantic relationships, so he offers this marriage of convenience with Abby. She'll get paid for this marriage of convenience and then he'll be able to get all this nasty gossip away from him. I love the romance here. It is a little bit slow burn. Abby had the biggest crush on him and now she's trying to play it cool. And then you can totally tell how hard Rex is falling for Abby, even though she's totally clueless. She's a very lovable dork here. I thought it was great. It's the first book in a new series and I'm so excited for the rest. The next read it was Good Intentions by Ella Frank. I finished up The Intentions Duet. This is the second book and it was okay. I give it three stars. It definitely wasn't as good as the first book. It kind of felt unnecessary, mainly because the plot here felt really repetitive and I just didn't see the point in this being a two book series. So Gabe and Marcus are MM couple. They are trying to make their relationship work and it was honestly kind of boring to read. Nothing really that exciting happens. I mean, they're still hot to read, but the plot itself fell flat. I still enjoyed the audio though because the narrators were great, but I definitely would have preferred it if it was just one longer book. Next was A Certain Appeal by Vanessa King. I'm kind of stuck between three and a half and four stars here. I still liked it. It was a good read. It's a Pride and Prejudice retelling set in the world of burlesque, which sounded so interesting to me. It does follow Pride and Prejudice pretty faithfully, so if you've read that or if you watched that, you will probably know what's going to happen in this book. We have Liz and Darcy first meeting. Liz is one of the burlesque dancers and Darcy is in the audience. They really hit it off. They start flirting, but then she ends up overhearing him saying something judgmental about her, so she writes him off. There's of course the Jane and Charles plotline, their romance. Jane is Liz's best friend at the burlesque theater. She's one of the singers and I love their relationship. I love their friendship. I honestly got pretty invested in the Jane and Charles relationship here, maybe at times a little 
little bit more than Liz and Darcy. Again, if you know the Pride and Prejudice story, you'll know how this plays out, but I still did like the unique twist to it with the burlesque setting. I just never fully fell in love with Darcy. Like Liz was great, Jane and Charles were great, but Darcy was just okay for me, but I still did like the banter between them. I read The Love Con by Ceresia Glass. This is a three-star read and it was 100% because of the audiobook. I'm honestly so disappointed I didn't love this one more. I had such high expectations for it because it sounded so, so good. It's got fake dating, friends to lovers. It's also got cosplay, this cosplay competition. It all sounded so fun, but the audiobook narrator was so boring to listen to. Like it was just a very flat tone throughout the whole book. So if you do plan on reading this one, I would say skip the audiobook and just read it. The story is about Kenya and Cam who are best friends and she's entered this cosplaying competition because she really wants to make it big in costume making. She's a bit of a rebel from her straight laced parents who want her to have a stable job so this is her final chance to make a career out of this. For the final round of the competition she actually needs a significant other to play a duo so that's where Cam comes in. He plays her pretend boyfriend and the story was cute but I just never fell in love with them. I like the idea, I like the concept about these best friends who cosplay and fake date, but I just wasn't as invested as I wanted to be. Like the voice, the narrator was just so monotonous to listen to. My next read was Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I give this one four stars. It was a really, really good read. I can see why people, so many people love this one. I definitely saw this one a lot because it was a Reese book club pick. I honestly thought it was more women's fiction and not actually romance, but then a lot of people recommended it to me on my channel and so I thought I'd give it a try and I really liked it. It's a second chance romance between authors and I don't know why it's been a pretty popular thing to write about author main characters and romances now but at least this one worked really well for me. I love the tension between Shane and Eva. They met like 15 years ago, they fell in love in a week, and they've been writing to each other through their books ever since. There is so much good longing here, like you could tell how much they want each other, even though they can't really have each other. Shane is a total sweetheart, and you can totally tell that Eva was it for him. I like that they were kind of opposites. He's a literary author, and she's a romance author, and they finally come together to deal with their pretty traumatic pasts. I will say this was one of those books that was more borderline between women's fiction and romance. Like the romance was definitely there and still really good, but it was also so a lot more about Eva and her journey. I still really enjoyed it though. The writing was fantastic. The characters were great and it was just so, so emotional. I then read two more Penny Reed books. I read a novella and a full length book. The novella is a prequel in the Good Folk series, Just Folking Around. It's an introduction to Raquel and Jackson who meet and have this wonderful night together. They really connect. They start to fall for each other, but then they don't see each other for five years. I gave this one three stars. It was just an okay novella. I didn't really care that much about the main characters and there just wasn't anything happening. I read their full-length book next, which is totally folked. I also gave this one three stars. I wish I could have loved it more, but it was just very okay. I still didn't fall in love with Jackson or Ray here. They were likable, but just nothing special compared to Penny Reed's other characters. I also I totally forgot to mention who they were. So if you read the Winston Brothers series, you'll know that Jackson is Jessica's brother. He's the sheriff of the town and Raquel Ray is Sienna's friend and fellow Hollywood actress. These two reunite after five years in this book and there's still a little bit too much hesitation between them. They want each other but they're not ready to put themselves out there for each other just yet. There's also not too much to the plot besides Ray escaping to Green Valley to get away from her Hollywood life. So the story was underwhelming and I just didn't fall in love with these characters so I'm sad to say I didn't love this one because I usually do love Penny Reed. My next read was a fantasy romance. I read The Unseelie Prince by Catherine and Kingsley. I sadly did not like this one all that much. I give it two and a half stars. I was intrigued by this book because I saw Ruby Dixon talking about it, talking about how it's a dark fantasy romance, and it also has a villain for a hero. So it's about the Fae, it's got some slow burn, and all of it sounded so good to me, but it just didn't really work out that well. Like it's slow burn, but just very slow in general with the plot 
itself, and the hero was a little bit too off-putting. So this is the first of four books in the Maze of Shadows series. The heroine Abigail is a human, I mean kind of a witch, but mostly human. She's been kidnapped by Valroy, the Fae Prince hero, and forced to enter his maze. She has to solve it in order to stay alive, and if she does win the maze, then she gets to be his wife. Not that she wants to, but with him being an evil hero, she doesn't have a choice. There's magic and fake creatures here, so I was intrigued by this world, but the romance just didn't do it for me. I love a good anti-hero, but Valroy just didn't really have anything about him that made me fall in love with him. The story itself was dragged out too, like I was just waiting for the whole maze thing to finish. That took forever, and then the ending came out of nowhere. It's a very strange ending, and it did make me not want to read the rest of the books. I actually ended up skimming them because I did want to know how it ended, but I'm glad I skimmed and didn't really spend that much time with them because the second and third book felt really repetitive, almost the same as the first book. I read Love, Comment, Subscribe by Kathy Yardley next. This one was great. I give it four stars. It was such a fun romance. It's an Asian romance between YouTubers. She is a beauty guru and he's a gamer and a vlogger. Lily and Tobin actually knew each other back in high school. They were both part of this nerdy group. He also had a crush on her back then, but now they're a little bit grown up. They're both famous YouTubers and they make a collab in order to revive their channels. They end up falling for each other and it was just so fun and adorable. I really enjoyed these two together. They had a lot of sweet and silly banter. So the romance was great and the plot with their careers, their YouTube careers, was also really interesting to read. They talk about how they struggle and deal with anxiety and burnout. For my first Kathy Yardley book, it was great. I'm really excited to read more about their whole friendship group. My next two reads are Omegaverse reverse harem romances. I read Pack Darling parts one and two by Lola Rock. For part one, I give it four stars. It's a really great start to this duet. I kept hearing about it a lot, like so many people were talking about it, so I had to give it a try. I'm actually surprised by how much I enjoyed it because I don't really read bully romances, but this one wasn't actually as awful as I thought it would be. Like the heroes weren't as mean as I was expecting them to be. They aren't nice guys, but they're not like cruel, unnecessarily cruel either. We have our four alphas. There's Alice, Hunter, Jet, and Finn. They don't want anything to do with the heroine. They don't want Lila to be a part of their pack, to be their new Omega, because they already have an Omega, Orion. But she doesn't really have a choice either in being with them. She's forced to be a part of their pack and it starts off really rough. I was pretty surprised by how slow burn it was and how little steam there was. That's probably my biggest complaint. There wasn't enough steam. In part one, there's actually more MM scenes than there are any with the heroine, but the writing was great, and I was really glad that I waited until both parts were out before starting the series because part one does end on a cliffhanger. For Pack Darling part two, I loved it even more. I gave it four and a half stars, but this is to no one's surprise because this book is basically just groveling from the heroes from our alphas. They messed up big time in part one and now they just want to earn Lila's forgiveness. Thankfully Lila does make them work for it. She even tries to find herself a new pack so there's a lot of jealousy. There is a little bit of action and suspense here to spice things up. I really have no complaints about the groveling. I thought it was great but my only complaint here again is about the steam. There just wasn't enough of it. It was all saved mostly towards the end of the book. I honestly don't know why the blue says the heat is high because it's not. It's more like a medium or like low medium. There isn't even like an orgy with all five guys so that was disappointing. But besides the steam, it was a really great duet. If you love reverse harem, if you like Omegaverse, definitely try this one out. If anyone is curious, my favorite of the guys is Finn who is the psycho of the group. I ended up reading the new Jessica Kane, of course. This is Temp. I give this one three stars. It was an okay read. Nothing amazing. It's an office romance between a CEO hero and the daughter of his greatest enemy. She's tasked with trying to spy and infiltrate his company by being a new Temp. But of course it's very insta-lovey. It goes pretty much how you would expect from Jessica Kane with an alpha hero and a younger heroine. There's a bit of groveling here which I 
always appreciate. I read another Omega oh Verse Reverse Harem Romance. I read Baby and the Late Night Howlers by Catherine Moon. I was really looking forward to this one because of how much I enjoyed Lola and the Billionaires, but this one was just a three star read for me. It was not quite as good. It did start off really great. We have Baby, our heroine, who thought she was a beta, but it turns out she's actually an Omega and she needs to find herself a pack. She ends up finding the Late Night Howlers who are bikers, they're an MC, and the rest of the book is pretty much her getting to know the gang, getting to know her alphas and the beta. Sadly though, towards the middle of the book, this is when things started to get a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive. All she did was pretty much sleep with each of the guys and there just wasn't enough plot outside of it for me. Or more like the plot outside of it just wasn't all that interesting and I wasn't all that invested in the romances either. Like the guys are nice and sweet but just nothing that made me fall in love with them. And then the ending felt really rushed with this evil biker gang who's out to hurt baby. I just didn't feel like things were balanced enough here so Sally, it was just three stars. I read Tattered Stars by Katherine Cowles. This is a small town romantic suspense. It's the first book in a new series, the Tattered and Torn series, and I gave it four stars. I ended up enjoying it. It was a good balance of sweet and emotional. So the heroine Everly, she returns to the small town she grew up in, the same town where her father destroyed a family, so she's a bit of an outcast in this town, but she is very determined to make things right, especially with that family her father hurt. The hero Hayes is the town sheriff and he gets off to a very rough start with her because he's not happy that she's back in town but he does eventually get his head out of his ass and treats Everly better. The romance here is a little bit slow burn it's kind of friends to lovers it's very sweet between them Hayes is super protective over Everly and there is some um, suspense here as well with someone trying to destroy Everly. It's a very solid romantic suspense and small town romance I mean if you've read Catherine Cowles before you know what to expect from her. These two tropes are like her thing so if you like those then you'll enjoy this one. I then read The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. This was four stars for me. It was an adorable MM romance. It's set on a reality TV show. Dev, one of the heroes, he's a producer for this dating show and his hero is the show's newest star for the season, Charlie. Charlie is a very nervous and anxious kind of guy and it doesn't help that he's not actually that into any of the women that he's supposed to be dating in the show. Instead, he starts falling for Dev, even though he's never fallen for a guy before. And Dev himself is trying to teach Charlie how to be more comfortable on camera, trying to teach him how to flirt while trying to keep his hands off of Charlie. It does sound a little dramatic and it does get a little crazy sometimes, but the romance itself was so, so sweet. Charlie and Dev were adorable together and I really loved the discussions about mental health and anxiety. It was a weird combination of feel good and emotional, but it just worked out really well. My second to last read was Wicked by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I'm honestly not sure why I decided to read this trilogy, but maybe it was because I saw that the Passion Flakes movie had just released, even though I don't really have plans to watch it. But this was a three-star read for me. It was very average. It's a new adult urban fantasy romance. It's set in New Orleans and the heroine is a fey hunter. Ivy is part of this organization that's trying to protect humans from fey, so she hunts them. The the newest addition to this organization is the hero Ren and the romance between them was very underwhelming. I feel like I probably would have enjoyed it more if I read it a couple years ago or when it first released but it was just very okay when I was reading it. The secrets and twists when it came to the world with Ivy is pretty predictable and the romance itself sadly just wasn't all that exciting. And then the final book in this wrap-up was actually my romance book club read. It was Hooked by Emily McIntyre. This is the first book in the Never After series which is a series of dark romance retellings and this one is a dark retelling of Peter Pan. We have Hook as a hero. He's kind of like an anti-hero and it's also a mafia romance. I gave a one three and a half stars. It was actually kind of close to four but I wasn't really happy with the ending but I love the concept of it and it was really easy to read and I did have fun with it. It wasn't perfect or anything but I liked our main characters. There's a lot of good chemistry between them. Hook has his whole revenge plot and he uses Wendy for it. He ends up being very obsessive and possessive over Wendy which is great. I love our alpha heroes but even though we have a whole backstory for Hook, Wendy's character just wasn't fleshed out as much. She had zero depth to her character. So sadly it just wasn't all that balanced between them and also the ending. It kind of 
felt super abrupt and Wendy it took Hook back way too easily and quickly like I needed some more growling from him and for Wendy to not be so easily forgiving so there just wasn't any satisfaction with the ending with the romance with the whole plot the suspense the beginning started off great but by the end it kind of fell flat for me which is why this is more like three and a half stars than four still I can see why people love this one I can also see why people hate this one but it wasn't a bad read for me and I would definitely continue reading more in the series more from Emily McIntyre it seems like a lot of people like the second book in the series a lot which is a Lion King retelling so hopefully I'll get to that one soon and that is it for my January wrap-up all 34 books as always let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these books links to them will be down in the description below thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time bye